I am going to lead you there. I am going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. That's all on God. That's all His responsibility. What's my responsibility? And He says, you will be a blessing. Psalm 102, we're talking about the divine favor of God. You will arise, from the NIV version, verse 13. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. Remember, Zion is symbolic of the church. For it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. Say, the appointed time. Now notice, it's been declared that Zion is the time. Zion is the type of the church. Just renew your mind to that, but go listen to part one if you're still wondering what I said about it. Zion is the type of the church. Whenever you see Zion, put yourself in there. And God, the word of God is saying here, that God wants to show compassion to you. And how does he do that? He shows you favor. He shows you favor. Everybody say favor. favor. And so we remember we said Jesus had established that time on the cross. He first of all declared that he was anointed to bring all these things to pass. And he says this is fulfilled in your hearing today. So now Jesus activating that prophecy in Isaiah. And then on the cross he says it is finished. It's not like you get healed today. You were healed on that cross before you were born. See, that's why we can understand that it's easier to access what God has for you. Instead of seeing yourself as a sick person trying to get healed. If you say, I was already healed 2,000 years ago. Now my body just has to catch up with it. And if I see that, that I am healed, how, we, how do you access that? By faith. On that cross, even though he was rich for your sakes, he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. That's how you access it. And so we understand that these are the things that God has established in you. And so we went to have a look at Abraham, where God spoke to him in chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. God says, I will show you the land. You don't have to wonder where it is. I will show you the land. Then he says... I will make you a great nation. So Abraham didn't ask for this. God decided. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Now for those that weren't here, just to catch you up, we took some time to have a look at that. You notice how in the statement, it was all God's idea. And when we are desperate and we've got problems in our lives, the things we're trying to get fixed, we can very easily get to a place and start saying, God, will you please? Please, God, can you? God, I want to. And we try and prove to God that we deserve it. And God, how come you haven't? And why is this not happening? And, and, and yet Jesus said, it is finished. The moment I turn around and say, God, can't you see? I'm accusing him of ignoring me or seeing me but not caring to fix it. We say, God, when? When, God, I'm accusing him of not understanding time. Because how do you know God says, I know the plans I have for you? They're not plans to harm you. They're plans for a great future and a great hope. They're plans to bless you. And to look after you. And to protect you. And to provide for you. Well then, when, when's he going to come through? You see, again, we, we're accusing God of having some alternative hidden agenda of not really caring. 
No, God knows exactly when you need it. But how many you know I can reject it? We can do it even in the natural. I can give you a gift and let's say an expensive, you know, vase that cost me like thousands of rands to buy. And this uh, thing you're going to really appreciate. And I give it to you and you go, oh, and you, you throw it on the floor. It's broken. Now it's worthless. Was that because I gave you a bad gift? You threw it on the floor. And very often we can do things that can, oh, well, I threw it on the floor in that example. We can do things, I don't want to accuse you of anything. <laughs> we can do things that can stop what God's trying to do in our life. And one of those things are when we start to accuse God of not caring enough, not seeing my problem, not seeing my dilemma, where it was all his idea. Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. I didn't even ask to get saved. He came and fetched me. He came and fetched you. We think, oh, I'm going to find religion now. I'm going to go and see a church. I feel like I need to do something. No, we think that's what happened. No, somebody was moved by God to intercede. Because it's impossible to come to God unless he calls you. And so when he calls, it's because someone's interceding. And God has already established the system that if someone prays for you, I will answer. And so someone interceded, called you in, and you gave your life to Jesus. And look at that. You're born again today. And so as you receive that by faith, it was God's idea to get you saved. It was His desire to heal you. It was His desire to provide you with everything you need. Notice in that scripture, we're speaking to Abraham. I have a land for you. I am going to lead you there. I am going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. That's all on God. That's all His responsibility. What's my responsibility? And He says, you will be a blessing. That's all I'm asking you to do. Is be a blessing. Be the one that reflects me in the earth. And if you do that, I will cover you. I will protect you. I will take you. I will lead you. I will get you to where I want you to be. And so we saw that when Abraham made a cho choice to obey that, by verse 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 1, we see that the Lord has blessed Abraham. He's old, well advanced in age. The Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. And you could wonder what all things mean. You come down to verse 34. This is his servant. He says, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. See, family God, when God calls you to do something, he doesn't expect you to try and do it on your own. He will equip you with the means to do it. If he's going to make you a great nation, you're going to have to have the wealth and the support system to make that nation work. And so God has called us to be a voice to the city, to this nation, to this earth, to demonstrate the kingdom of God, to get people saved. But it's not just about getting people into a church so that when they die one day, they'll go to heaven. There's more to life. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. And very often it's amazing how when you talk about Abraham, and of course he becomes, uh, uh, gives birth to, to Isaac, and then Jacob becomes Israel. Israel has 12 sons. They become the great nation of Israel. And later on through the tribe of Judah, they become known as Jews, Jewish people. Jewish people, you don't have to convince them to be rich. They're born, and by the age of 12, they know you're going into business, and all your uncles are financing you, and they're training you, and they're putting you through the right schools, and you're just convinced. And that's why the rest of the, 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 the unsaved world don't understand that and see that as a challenge, because mediocrity is always challenged by excellence. And they think, you know, the Jewish people are just out to take over systems. And they go, yes. <laughs> why? Because they understand covenant. 
They have a God that has spoken. You don't have to convince them. They, they, they trained in it. They raised in it. It's only Christians that you have to kind of say, come on. The world, you know, they, you've got guys out there that are making billions of dollars. Not even serving Jesus. But you find many of those, those that understand the system and work it and write books about it and that, you'll notice there's always a chapter about giving. Why would an unsafe person doesn't care whether there's a God or not, is out to just get ridiculously rich, doesn't need to be any richer, but he's going out to do it even more, and yet has a chapter on you need to give. Why should someone who wants all the money give anything away? They discovered if you drop a ball, gravity makes it fall. Isn't that right? If you light petrol, it burns. There's laws. And they discovered that by being a blessing, they don't call it that, but by being a blessing, they're always doing okay. Amen. It's only some Christians, not you, because you all, I'm, I'm encouraging your faith already. But it's only Christians you're going to say, this is the word. Because what's happened is the enemy thinks, well, if you found the truth and you believe in Jesus, that's fine. But then don't teach anything else. Just go to heaven. Get out. Just go. Go to heaven. Go. Go. Just okay, send, come Jesus, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus. I've got a problem, come Jesus. I've, I've got something, I've got a challenge in my life. If Jesus could just come now. <laughs> and the devil says, that's fine, just get off the earth. Why? Because the moment you start talking like this, you start invading his system. You start to deal with mammon. You start to come against the corrupt world system that Satan established to try and get all the wealth away and stored up with wicked people. But God already declared through his covenant the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Who's that? So you start to find these things out. And then, oh, it's all spiritual. It's about going to heaven. That could be one of the most selfish things is get someone saved. And all you've got to do is just buckle down. Don't expect anything else. Just love Jesus until you go to heaven. No, God never meant for that to happen. He wants us to be a demonstration of this covenant goodness. It's an amazing thing when anybody stood out in the old covenant and started declaring who God is, even nations knew. They were coming down, Israel was coming through, and they were conquering as they went. God had shown them such favor. Cities that should have conquered them, they were just overcoming as they went that there was a next city coming up, and they, they thought, <laughs> we're about to be taken over. And so they spent a bunch, they sent a, a recce team and, and dressed them in old clothes, and worn shoes and gave them bread that looked stale and days old. And, and then they went and they looked all tired and got, came to Israel. And Israel says, where would you come? Oh, we come from far away. They were just around the corner. <laughs> We've traveled many days to get to you. And they said, what, why, why have you come? Because we've heard of your God. Amen. That no one can withstand Amen. your God. We've come to make covenant with you. And Israel, well, okay, well, let's do it. Cut covenant with them. Said, now, what's yours is ours, ours is yours. We are in it together. We'll look after you. Thank you. Well, where's your home? Oh, down the road. <laughs> what? We were about to take you out, but now they're in covenant. You see, this is what happens. Even the world will, has to, family, the world has to look at the church and say, what you've got, even if we don't understand it, we've got to get on your side. We've got to make sure we're on the right side. I don't want to be speaking against the church. If someone's speaking against the church, criticizing the church, they don't understand it. And that means we just look like some religious organization that stands in the corner, frosts at the mouth, throwing signs and calling people names and saying, turn or burn, and we hate this and we hate that. And that's not the message of the gospel. No, God has called us to be His voice in this earth, to be His hands and feet in this earth. And yeah, he's telling them that 
Abraham is well blessed so he can be this nation. Now notice Galatians 3 verse 7, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Now we saw in verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. It is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The same blessing, family. Everybody say the same blessing. Same blessing. And that's where you see in verse 9, those who are of faith are also blessed along with Abraham who believed. Well, why was Abraham blessed? Because he believed. Hallelujah. Now, look at verse 29. If you are Christ's, If you are Christ's, if you are Christ's, how many of you are, are Christ's? Tell your neighbor, I'm in the book. And look at this. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and your heirs according to the promise. What's our responsibility? To believe. God, you want it? I believe. Amen. Now look at Romans chapter 4, verse 16. It's from the Living Bible. Verse 16. God's blessings are given to us, how? By faith. As a free gift. A free gift. You don't work for a gift. Now, I know there's some people that try to make their gift conditional. No, no, that, now, now you're making me work for you. You want me to respond a certain way, then you will pay me my gift. <laughs> it's not a gift anymore. A gift means I give it to you, and I don't care with what you do with it. Isn't that right? I don't give it with any strings. I don't expect anything back. That's the last time I give them anything. Well, did you actually give then? Because, or were you buying another gift in return? <laughs> Don't make me go down that road now. I'm just, we're dealing with this here. God's blessing is a gift. We don't have to earn it or deserve it. Say that God's blessing is His gift to me. See, favor is a gift. It's not because we're so clever. No, it's because... God has chosen to bless us. And all you have to do is say, I believe, and favor starts flowing. Amen. Let me show this to you from the Word. God's blessings are given to us by faith as a free gift. We are certain to get them, whether or not we follow Jewish customs, whether or not you obey the law. If we have faith like Abraham's, now, when I say obey the law, obviously there's, there's other implications behind that. I already shared that this morning. There's reasons God has the law, but I don't do them to get the gift. So, if we have faith like Abraham's, for Abraham is the father of us all when it comes to these matters of faith. That is what the scripture means when they say that God made Abraham the father of many nations. God will accept all people in every nation who trust God as Abraham did. God will accept all people from all nations. Don't let anybody tell you ever that you don't deserve something because you're from a certain people group or you're from a certain race or a certain background or a certain education. That, that God doesn't look at any of that. All of that is irrelevant. If you, doesn't matter who you are, choose to believe like Abraham believed, then the moment you do that, you step into the favor place. No man can stop it. And this promise is from God himself who makes the dead live again 
and speaks of future events with as much certainty as they were already past. God sees you blessed. So we may as well live blessed. <laughs> Let me say that again. God sees you blessed. We may as well live it. You're not taking anything from God. Because that's what the enemy will try and do. You're trying to make God give you something. Man, to make God do stuff. No, God's already done it. You just using God to get rich. No. He sees me rich. So I may as well be rich. Oh, I had five amens out of that. I said, God sees you rich. You may as well be rich. I'm not going to be something so that makes my neighbor more happy. Because they don't understand the word anyway. Until I get them saved and born again. Look at chapter 4 of Romans, verse 13. The promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Through the righteousness of faith. The now, family of God, we know from the Word that we cannot be righteous in our own ability. God calls our own acts of righteousness as filthy rags. So it's impossible for someone who's not born again to be righteous in God's mind. Jesus was made to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God. So when you have faith in Jesus, you are made righteous. That's the only way. So no one could be righteous until Jesus died and rose from the dead. True? He has a man. Thousands of years before the death and resurrection of Jesus. That when God said, I'm going to bless you. All you need to do is be a blessing. And Abraham said, I believe God said, I'm not waiting for the crucifixion. You are righteous. Join us for a time of celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus. The Bay Christian Family Church will be putting on a Christmas production and Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us for a special celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus. It will be taking place on these dates and at these times at the Bay Christian Family Church and we encourage you to book your seats to be part of this time of celebrating Jesus. That's our Christmas production taking place at the Bay Christian Family Church on these dates and at these times. For any info and to book your seats, please go to allenbagministries.org. Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church as we see the New Year in in the glory and presence of our God. Happy New Year, family! Bless New Year! We as a ministry will be stepping into our 30 years of ministry and the exciting year and direction He has in mind for us in 2024. This is always one of our most exciting services at this time of the year. Get ready for New Year. I'm telling you, the most amazing things are about to take place. So we encourage you to come early to be part of this special service. Come and see in the new year in the glory and presence of our God. That's our New Year's Eve service, taking place at 10 p.m. at the Bay Christian Family Church. For any info, please visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Isn't it special to know that despite living in a world that's hard and unforgiving. We serve a God that not only forgives, but shows favor toward us. The God of the universe favors us. The divine favor of God. In this series, Alan Bang delves into powerful scriptures that will help build your faith to believe for God's promise of favor that He shows toward His children. The favor of God is simply when 
God looks in your direction and smiles and says, watch me. In this series, you will discover what the divine favor of God is. If we want to see this abundant life, it's going to have to be by faith. And so when it comes to the favor of God, the Word tells us that God grants divine favor. You will learn how God shows us favor, and you will receive powerful instruction on how to position yourself to receive and walk in God's divine favor. God favors you. Don't feel guilty about that. Give your series today and enjoy God's divine favor in your life. Visit our online store to purchase your series or contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. If you've not yet decided to serve Jesus, do it today. You've heard the goodness of God and He loves you and everything He's done was to give you life to get you saved. And today it's your day. Every one of us here have somewhere along the line made that decision. We gave our lives to Jesus. And the word is clear that if you confess with your mouth that he's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. I don't know where you've come from, what you've been through, but here's the thing. God loves you and he gave his life. All you have to do today is believe that. I'm going to lead you in that prayer. Let's say this together. Thank you, Jesus. You gave your life so that I could have life. You died for my sin, paid for it in full. And then you rose from the dead, proving I'm forgiven. The Father's satisfied. And today, I call you Lord. You are my Savior. And from this day on, I love to serve you, to walk with you. One day... I will leave this earth and I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Divine favor. That is what God has thought up for you and for me. And I really trust that you enjoyed that powerful message from my dad. If you'd like to listen to this whole series, you can go to our website and it'll take you to our online store and you can get a hold of it there. Now, if you just committed your life to the Lord, congratulations. We have something that we'd like to get to you to help you build your relationship with God and help you on your walk with God. Please go to our website and give us your information so that we can get this to you as soon as possible. Well, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this message from my dad. Remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life.